Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where, as you can see, if you're a regular to the channel, I'm on a different computer today, uh, so I'm hoping my laptop holds up, and I'm going to be able to show you how to solve this puzzle. Um, so Wolfric has sent this in um, on our Twitter account, which is at Cryptic Cracking, for those of you who don't follow us, and he said that the puzzle took him over an hour, and uh, he wondered whether we could find a more efficient way of doing it. Well, I don't know yet, but we shall have a look in a moment. If you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, then just click on the link under the video. And that will take you to our software where you'll see exactly what I'm seeing here. And you can solve the puzzle first or afterwards, as, as is your, your preference. So let's have a look and see how we go about doing this. Um, now, I'm going to use standard notation today. So what do I mean by that? That means I'm looking at three by three blocks and what I'm doing is I'm oops, I'm trying to identify within three by three blocks where a number can only go into exactly two positions. So if you look at where you can place ones in the highlighted area, it's in exactly two positions and I make little pencil marks to remind me of that fact. Now some people think this is cheating to do this, um, but uh, I come from a sort of speed solving background where you have to use all of the information as as much as you can as quickly as you can and I found this to be the most efficient way of doing that. Now when I first started solving Sudoku I used to pencil mark in all of the options. Now that is a terrible method and I don't recommend it. Um, uh, you have to be uh, well I think for two reasons. Firstly, it's time consuming. Secondly, you miss a lot of the beautiful logic that exists within these puzzles if you do use that method. Um, so definitely don't recommend that. Now let's have a look. Eights on this bottom block. We can see we can pencil mark eights over on the right hand side, which allows me to make some more pencil marks. Sevens, I can pencil mark into those two squares. Uh, fours look in fact this bottom box is quite interesting so fours can only be in those two positions now oddly look at this one here now I can't pencil mark a one in this bottom right three by three block but I can observe that the one is not in this square now I've already pencil marked four sevens and eights into other squares so the fact that the one can't go in this square means that actually we've discovered a hidden well it's a naked single by virtue of the fact that no other digit can go into this particular square this square must be a three now normally actually this uh, you know I've been extolling the virtues of so-called Snyder notation which is this uh, highlighting method for numbers that can only go in two positions. It doesn't normally reveal this sort of three here, but in this case it has, and we'll, we'll take that. So there must be a three in one of those two squares now. Looks a three over here. This can't be a three anymore, therefore this is a three. Uh, ones must be in one of those two squares. Uh, uh, fours, threes, twos, sevens. Those sevens might be better. Look, we can pencil mark some sevens into those two positions. Um, nines as well look nines this nine here and the nine in the top I mean, there's a nine in one of those two squares now that means this square must be a nine which means in turn that there must be a nine either here or here ah now this six and this four become important in row two because they interact rather nicely in this top left three by three block you can see there's only actually two positions now that the four and six can go into and that's these two squares so all of a sudden we are able to isolate the value of this square 
and this square. These two squares must be 5 and 8. And that's, well, it's a little bit helpful. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing instantly. It means there's an 8 in one of those two squares because of the 8 down here. Now, similarly with the 5, can we do something with the 5? Yes, we can because of this 5 here. So the fact this is a 5 and there's a 5 in one of these two squares means that in the top right box we can pencil mark 5s into those two squares. Now, and this is important if you're new to pencil marking, you can see, oh, my cursor disappeared too, you can see that we have 3s and 5s pencil marked into two squares in the same 3x3 three three block. Now that means that these two squares can only be the numbers 3 and 5 because of the logic that we're using. We're saying this square here, these, either of these squares is a 3 and either of these squares is a 5. So obviously two squares, two unknowns. I cannot put anything else into these two positions. Now that ought to be helpful. It means that there's a 5 in one of these two squares. Uh, what else does it do? Must do more than that, probably, but not quite seeing how. Uh, sixes, six, six, fours. What am I missing here? Maybe this is why this puzzle is very difficult, is because. It's around here, you get stuck and you can't make progress. Um, you can see we can pencil mark some twos, I think, in the top right box. This two down here and the two on the left hand side. I mean, there must be a two in one of those two squares. I don't know a great deal about ones. And the other number, so one, two, six, and nine. Okay. Two here. Can't see how to use that. Seven. Six. Ah, right. This square here can be a six only be a six because of the six up here and the six down there so I should have spotted that much more quickly but sometimes when solving on a computer you don't spot things quickly especially not when you're talking while you're doing it now that means this square is a six it's the only place a six can go in this block it allows us to pencil mark some sixes on the left hand side now all of a sudden we have this interesting two by two setup in this this square and that is powerful because now this 2 becomes powerful if we look at we can now pencil mark 2's which we couldn't before and that combined with this 2 down here means we get some pencil marks on the left hand side but it also allows us to use this 5 more profitably there must be a 5 in one of those two squares and that gives us another digit. We managed to pencil mark fives into one of these two positions. Well, this position can no longer be a five. So there must be a five here. And now we've got six digits in effect. Well, we have got six digits in row three. And we're looking to place the numbers two, four, and six. Now, let's ask ourselves, what can this square be? Well, it can only be a four because there's already a six and a two in the column. So this is a 4, that gives us a 4 and a 6 here, which means this is a 6, this is a 2, and suddenly we're looking like we're making more progress. Um, this can't be a 2 anymore. 2, there must be these two squares, because there's a 3, 5 pair look in this top right 3 by 3 block, we must be looking for a 1 and a 9 in these two squares which means actually look there's a one in one of these two positions and because of the one at the bottom in this square that means this square here is the only place a one can go 
So we can get to go 1, 8, pencil mark 8. Use this 1 to eliminate the pencil, uh, the 1 in this square. This square here must be a 1. And where can we put a 1 in column 7 now? Well, only in this position. So 1 and 8 like that. This 8 now immediately we can unwind. This must be the 8. And suddenly we get a 6 8 pair as well over on the left hand side. So a flurry of activity there that all looks like it's helpful. Now, in row 5 of the grid, we need the numbers 4, 5, and 7 into the empty positions. Now we have a 7 here, look, that's, so we cannot have a 7 in either of these two squares. So there's only one position for a 7, and that's there. Let's make sure we pencil mark the 7s on the left hand side, and these two squares must be 4 and 5 in some order. Now, can we use that somehow? Not immediately seeing how to do that. Six, threes. Uh, okay, so what now? What would we? Well, I can pencil mark fours into these two squares. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. And in this bottom area. Let's look at that. So we have a 6 here and a 6 here and a 6 over on the left hand side. So actually a 6 in this bottom left box can only be in those two squares. And a 3 in this bottom left hand box can only be in these two squares. Now this is interesting now. I'm going to study this for a second. Ah, now well, I don't know if it's helpful, but look at this 4. We have actually pencil marked in this bottom left 3x3 three three block 1s, 2s, 3s, 6s and 9s. So that's 5 of the 9 digits. So that 4 in column 1 means that this square and this square actually can't take 6 of the 9 digits because they also can't take 4. So the only options for these two squares are 5, 7 and 8. So this square can only be 7 or 8 because there's a 5 already over here. And this square can only be 5 or 7. Which... Ah, now that is important. So let's look at this now. Let's look at column one in more detail. You can see we've got three squares that can only be some combination of the numbers five, seven and eight. So three digits. So those squares must occupy these three cells. This cell here, this cell and this cell. That means this cell can't be a seven. If we tried to put a seven into this square, this square would be an eight. This square would be a 5, and we couldn't fill this square at all. So this square is not 7. This square is 7. And this square must be a 2 or a 3. And this square must be a 2 or a 3. Actually, and this 7 here means we can, we can get rid of the 7 there. And that's important because that allows us to find a 5-7 pair at the bottom look. These two squares again, just using our pencil marking logic, are locked to being 5 and 7. And you can see that actually because this square is also a 5 or a 7, there is now a pair in row 9. So let's, let's make that clearer. So in effect now we've got 6 digits in row 9. And we're only looking to place the numbers 4, 6, and 9 into the open cells. First thing we can say is this can't be a 7, therefore. So this is the 7. In this. Now the fact that that's true means that that unwinds the 7 and the 5 here, which means this is a 5. And that gets us going up with the 8 and the 5 up here. So all of a sudden, again, I feel like we're making very useful progress now just unwinding everything we've done now we're still looking to place a nine into one of these two squares well this can't be a nine 
So this is a 9, and this is the 2. Therefore, this is a 9. So now there's a 9 in one of these two squares. And we're still looking for a 5, I guess, into the central 3x3 three three box. I can't quite see where that goes. So let's pencil mark the 5s. And you can see, obviously, we get to fill this digit in with a 2. So only thing we're lacking in that box. 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 3. Let's check this box. 1, 4, ah, yes, this square. Look, this square can only be a 4. Uh, so just comparing, all I'm doing there is comparing the contents of the row with the, the box in the column. The only option for this square is 4. That means we need a 1 into one of these two squares. And that's, and yeah, the puzzle's solved now. So now 1 and 9 up here. 9 and 2 here. This must be a 3. And all of a sudden, that means this is a 3. It's the only place a 3 can go in the box, which means this is a 2. Uh, and I think... We're almost home and hose now. This square here can only be a 4 or a 5, I think. Let's pencil mark all those in just to keep things reasonably in check. We're looking at these two squares. We're looking for a 6 and a 9. So we know this is going to have to be the 9. Although we've pencil marked into two positions, actually this 9 here means we can so this is 9, this is 6, this is 6, this is 8. Let's pencil mark 8s in here and do this longhand. Still need a 4 in the box, so again, we can pencil mark 4s like that. This square here can be 3, 4 or 8, looking at the contents of the column. And look over, here we have an 8 and here we have a 3. So in fact, this is a 4, and that resolves everything. 4, 5, 5 into this square. This should be a 2. This can no longer be a 2, not that it ever could be. This must be a 1 now. It's the only option for this square. Still need a 4 in the column. That puts that there. 1, 8 like this. 8 and 3 into those two squares. 4 and 5 here, 5 and 3 there. So that's how to do the puzzle. Uh, so I hope you guys found that useful. I've gone deliberately slowly today, just really majoring on trying to make myself structured, using the pencil marks as much as I can. For those of you who are relatively new to more advanced Sudoku, I cannot recommend this method enough. It'll get you through most puzzles up to, I'd say, the, the level of diabolical some diabolicals it'll see you through those um, but you know if you want a, a firm base for your pyramid in terms of you know making sure you have the basics sorted out then what I've done today is a very um, I think a, quite a sensible way of approaching solving Sudoku thanks for watching and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic